The Sessor Empowerment Foundation has called on the federal government to ensure the perpetrators and sponsors of the farmer header attacks in the Benue Valley are brought to book. The program's manager of the foundation, Ina Inga, made this known at an event to present a research report on the crisis in the Benue Valley held in Abuja. The report, which covered investigations across Benue, Plateau, and Taraba states, sampled opinions of members of communities that were at the receiving end of these attacks to understand their stories and make recommendations accordingly. Nga says the government must do more to provide better security for the people of these communities so they can go about their normal lives without fear of imminent attacks. The, the conflicts, as we all know, have led to loss of lives, livelihoods, and property across the three states. And there's been no accountability and justice for victims. There have also been inadequate and inaccurate data and statistics on the crisis, mostly underreported. Of course, we know about the conflicting narratives based on where the, 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 the conflicts have taken place. We are aware of the poor government response. And in Benue, those were the um, communities that were covered, Lugu, Buruku, Goma, Okoku, Agatu, Ado, Akodi, Kwande, Bay East, and Gwe West. In Plateau, we went to Bokos Park in Ladi, Briyom, just north, and Mangu. And in Taraba, we went to Ibi, Bali, Takum, Sadauna, Sajalingo, Lao, Gasol, and Bukhari. But in many instances, the herdsmen attacks were on soft targets. Of course, sedentary farmers uh, is, uh, was soft target already and the clashes are not as widely reported as we believe There's, there was evidently widespread and high numbers of lives lost sexual assaults widely reported that says over 144 thousands of homes destroyed victims in some communities believe that peace talks are not effective as the herdsmen are have broken their words in the past even after there were meetings organize to bring some sort of resolution to after the conflicts after an attack you have people come they have the communities with these uh, leaders the community religious leaders try to broker peace which doesn't last very long and then they're attacked again we saw we recorded mass graves across three states um, what you see there is one in Tar taraba we saw those in benway and then in Plateau as well, across several communities, the rec recommendations, again, from talking to the community members themselves, and as well as security, all the stakeholders that we've engaged. So um, the first thing would be improve security for the affected communities. Most places we went to, it seemed as though they were just they're left on their own. You could go for hours into a community that is smack in the middle of nowhere. And so you can tell that they're still vulnerable to attacks at any time because again nobody knows the timing nobody knows when they're going to come again but again there's little or no security provided for the communities that have already been attacked and um, the recommendation recommendations that the government should bring perpetrators and sponsors you know to justice government need to uh, take up its responsibility as a duty bearer to be able to holistically solve the entire dimension of conflicts in the Middle Belt, right from the pure criminality that are happening, the contestation in terms of resources, um, boundary issues, um, all that, the mutual suspicion uh, between the different inhabitants and what have you, um, holistically, so that the primary purpose of government being the protection of life and property and welfare of the citizens, um, which is outlined in the Constitution Section 14, should clearly be the main thing that the government is focused on, especially under a democratic dispensation. The rule of law is very important. So we agree completely with the findings here and um, even though collectively it should be our responsibility also to also assist government the security agencies through providing information, building community resilience, issue of the early warning, early response, 
um, carrying out interfaith dialogue and other dialogues in the respective communities so that the people themselves could begin to see that the issue of their security actually they are part and integral part of the the government we are just looking at probably federal government the state government have a responsibility the local governments there have a responsibility the various gatekeepers um, whether they are the traditional rulers the religious leaders various groups of the youth the women and other different groups must partake and participate in their own uh, security also let's not just leave it for the government alone there were destructions of farmlands and, and we know that uh, Benue, uh, people of Benue, uh, Plateau and Taraba, those regions, they are majorly uh, agrarian, their they are, they are, they are major business or stay is agriculture. And so when, this, when these attacks were going on, as you said, as the report have revealed, it wasn't really clashes, as, 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 as commonly said, it's actually attacks. So when these attacks happen, so they don't just uh, attack the people, they attack their very, very uh, essence uh, of life, that which is their, their access to their farmlands. And so they destroy their farmlands, destroy their crops, and uh, uh, in addition to the lives they take. And there were also issues of, of uh, child abuse as well, and uh, issues of, particular issues of violence against women. Uh, they, they, were, they were reported cases of, of women being sexually abused by these attackers. Uh, some some were left uh, alive to tell their stories, but some they they, they abuse them and still kill them in the process. And of course, uh, issues of the, the dimensions of people with disabilities as well. I uh, uh, had this conversation with, with some of them uh, some few weeks ago, and then they narrated their story on, on how those attacks affected them. And one of them, one of the one of the key things that came out was actually the, the experience shared by the, the deaf the deaf woman about uh, the, some of the deaf uh, people they, they, they lost in those, in, those, in those attacks. And the fact that when, when there are even gunshots and then the other kinds of sounds going where people are running it, uh, taking the shelter, they are deaf, they don't even hear these things, so they don't even know this thing is happening. All thing is right at the, in the, in the, at the front and it's too late to take over at the time. And so people with disability we were, we were grossly affected in very unique ways in, on this attack. And so these are some of the issues uh, that have uh, come up from this from this study, and uh, we are hoping that the, the government will look closely into this. Uh, the, the security agency will look closely into this to see how we address this. And running, um, running into the elections, as the Human Rights Commission have said, it hasn't come at a better time than this, uh, because the, we know we know some of our our political elites how they try to explore uh, situations and circumstances to their advantage, and so. We, the government have to look into all these dimensions of these attacks and these issues going up to the elections so we don't lose uh, lives unnecessarily uh, in the course of these elections.